months to, quote, support all components of the revolution. However, this figure is merely a drop in the bucket in comparison to the yearly $500 billion channel of money flows to overall Salafists and Al-Qaeda-linked groupings from the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia. It is within this backdrop that Syrian expert in strategic affairs, Salim Harba, disclosed that the arrests of 700 gunmen in Babur Amr in early March were composed of gunmen from the Gulf states, Iraq, Lebanon, with Qatari intelligence agents among them. Salim said these men were stripped of weapons made in Europe, America, and Israel, including Israeli grenades, night binoculars, and communication systems. 60,000 rounds of ammunition were also confiscated in Lebanon around the same period, found hidden within two vehicles on board an Italian container ship. Intercepted in the Mediterranean Sea, like the seizure in Babur Amr, officials found rocket-propelled grenades and heavy caliber ammunition. It's time for that regime to move on, and it is time to stop the killing of Syrian citizens by an armed guard. Permanent members of the Security Council using their veto when people are being murdered, it is just despicable. And I ask, whose side are they on? They are clearly not on the side of the Syrian people. Why has so much attention been given towards the Russians as the purveyors of injustice? When the mounting evidence is clear that our eyes should be focused on Saudi Arabia and understanding why the conflict in Syria has yet to cease. With the arms confiscated, part of the overall Saudi plan left intentionally unnoticed by the UK and US? Or perhaps was it simply just Saud al Fazl's duty? Pack editors discovered through announcements made January 14, 2012, in the heat of the Syrian crisis, that British Prime Minister David Cameron met with King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia in a one-day visit to Riyadh. The British Prime Minister's office in Downing Street disclosed that the purpose of the meeting was to discuss the importance of the United Kingdom-Saudi bilateral relationship agreeing to strengthen cooperation in a range of areas from that already in existence. They also shared concerns about the situation in Syria. Most telling was revealed 
by former British ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Sir Alan Munro, who told Sky News, It is very important that David Cameron takes this opportunity to reestablish the sort of mutual confidence at the top level that his predecessors ever since Margaret Thatcher have sustained with Saudi Arabia as an important partner. It was then noted that British defense manufacturer BAE Systems has interest in Saudi Arabia, which at the time of the meeting were working to expand a large typhoon Eurofighter contract with the Saudis. What was revealed was acknowledgement that the nature of the meeting between Cameron and King Abdullah was to sustain a mutual confidence initiated by former here, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Shocked, but composed and determined. Thatcher's initiation was with Saudi Prince Bandar bin Sultan in 1985, the Al Yamama deal involving BAE systems. Bandar, Thatcher, BAE, all tied to a slush fund deal that intersects and directly traces to the financing of two of the hijackers of September 11, 2001. Nawaf al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Madar were two of the five terrorists who hijacked American Airlines Flight 77, crashing it into the Pentagon. They both were harbored by two Saudi intelligence operatives, Amar al-Bayomi and Osama Basnan. In the course of four years leading up to September 2001, al-Bayomi and Basnan were transferred between fifty-one to seventy-three thousand dollars in checks and cashier checks from Prince Bandar and his wife, Princess Haifa bint Faisal. Haifa transferred the money to the wife of Osama Basnan, then by procedure transferred the money to the bank account of Omar al Bayomi, deposited by his wife Majira Dwaikit. Bayomi is known to have paid for housing and flight training lessons for the two hijackers of American Airline Flight 77. However, the tens of thousands of dollars transferred in Saudi May's fashion that made its way to Nawif al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Madar all originated from a bank account at Riggs National Bank in Washington, D.C., owned by Prince Bandar bin Sultan. Our decision to start negotiating the purchase of a substantial number of aircrafts for our national airline. I am also Prince Bandar was greeted by an undesired reality when in 2007, the story had erupted that he, since his arms for oil deal with Margaret Thatcher in 1985, had enjoyed $2 billion in kickbacks and bribes. A deal made between the Saudi prince and the British with a friendly handshake. However, the overall Al Yamama deal for BAE weapons in exchange for Saudi oil during the 22 year span between 1985 and 2007 shored up $80 billion to $100 billion that was never accounted for. Money from the Al Yamama deal has been traced to clandestine operations, to arms purchased from Egypt and sent to the beginning stages of Al Qaeda, the Mujahideen. Tens and thousands of dollars were directly given to two of the 9 11 hijackers whose funds originated in the same bank account of Saudi Prince Bandar, who for 22 years received billions of dollars for brokering the Al Yamama BAE for Saudi oil exchange with British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. Two weeks before the 9-11 hijackings, a wealthy Saudi family who had been in contact with Mohammed Atta and other of the 9-11 hijackers abruptly fled from their luxury home near Sarasota, Florida. This raises further questions about the Saudi links to the hijackers. The house was owned by Saudi financier Isam Ghazawi and was occupied by his daughter Anud and her husband Abdul Aziz Al-Hiji. 
Law enforcement agents found records of telephone calls with a number of the 9-11 hijackers, Mohammed Atta included, and security records of the gated community also showed visits by vehicles owned by Atta and another 2B hijacker, Zayed Jara. Atta, Jara, and Marwan al-Shihi were all living within 10 miles of Ghazawi's house and were taking flying lessons in nearby Venice, Florida. Analysis of phone records from Ghazawi's house showed contact with 11 other terrorism suspects, including Walid al-Shihi, who was with Atta on the first plane to hit the World Trade Center in New York City on September 11th. Yes, people do know where they stand with us. Yes, they do know we're strong government. Yes, they do know we have a prompt here. The operation thrived by the logistics of a BAE slush fund, a deal that represented one of the biggest funding pools in history for global covert operations, protected by Her Majesty Elizabeth II's Official Secrets Act, with its finances guarded by the highly unregulated system within the city of London Square Mile and offshore havens under British dominion. An operation left unobstructed by David Cameron and King Abdullah's arrangements during the heat of the Syrian crisis. The UK are involved in creating the slush fund deal. The US, under two administrations, has behaved with complicity. Why then would these same forces ever to have bothered to seek out the truth of who actually led the massacre in Hula, Syria, May 25th? The U.S. never even bothered to investigate how their partners of the U.K. and Saudi Arabia carried the attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C. in the morning of September 11th, 2001. ما تراه من وسائل لاستئصاله إذا أردنا الحرية فيجب أن نتحرر من هذا النظام وإذا أردنا العدالة فيجب أن نقتص من هذا النظام وإذا أردنا الاستقلال فيجب أن نقف في وجه هذا النظام وإذا أردنا الحقوق فيجب أن نزيح هذا النظام يا أسود الشام Президент Российской Федерации Владимир Владимирович Путин. Жестокого врага.